Last week, the Google logo looked really strange, had a molecule in the shape of a football in the middle of it. So why was it? And what was special? The molecule was C60, 60 carbon atoms joined together like a football, which is known by a rather strange name of Buckminster Fullerene, or some people just call it buckyballs, and most chemists just call it C60. And the reason it was on the Google logo is because it was the 25th anniversary of its discovery. I've got two samples. Uh, one sample is carbon. Uh, this is something that we extracted from, uh, from pencil this morning. So this carbon contains mostly graphite. Ra rather boring black powders. Uh, so this is just ordinary carbon. Um, the other sample is a little bit more exciting for me anyway. Uh, and this is something called Buckminster Fullerene. So we've got here uh, uh, this little clusters of 60 carbon atoms forming uh, this shape. And uh, I'm just going to show you how uh, properties of ordinary graphitic carbon are different to properties of Buckminster Fullerene. Now its discovery is a bit misleading because it was actually only detected by Harry Croto and Rick Smalley in a spectrum of vapour that was evaporated from a piece of carbon by a laser pulse. They didn't separate out any solid or anything like that. They just saw peak at mass 720, which corresponded to 60 carbon atoms. They then spent days trying to work out how 60 carbon atoms would fit together, and they came up with this wonderful shape. And they asked one of their mathematical friends, does it have a special name? And the friend said, yes, it's called the soccer ball. So you see, some chemists are not very sportingly aware. Anyway, there were six years of argument. Was C60 a special molecule, or did it just happen to be in their experiment they found a molecule of mass 720? And it was only in 1991 that solid C60 was separated out and isolated in reasonable amounts. And then, instead of being made by um, a laser evaporating something, it was done by taking two carbon rods, touching them together, and putting a very big current in between them, rather like an old-fashioned carbon arc lamp that used to be used in cinemas for projecting films. And you get very bright light, it's very hot, and some of the soot that evaporates contains C60. And if you take this soot, this black powder, looks horrible, and put it in an organic solvent, out of it you can extract a beautiful sort of wine-coloured solution. And that was C60. I'm going to demonstrate that uh, fullerene is a soluble form of carbon, and uh, graphite or amorphous carbon, uh, they are in soluble form of carbon. So I'm just going to do a solubility test for you now. It was the first new form of carbon that had been discovered for perhaps a thousand years or more. So I've got two beakers, um, 100 milliliters each, uh, and I'm going to put just, just a little bit of uh, each form of carbon in this beaker. So now I'm taking uh, just a small amount of ordinary carbon. Chemically, it is interesting because you can get a variety of reactions. And my research group did some experiments which showed that if you heated up C60 and made a very fine powder from it, instead of being black, it looked yellow. I'm going to use organic solvent called toluene. Um, uh, and this solvent is known to be very good for fullerenes. So I've got a bottle. It's very rare for chemists to get a Nobel Prize for discovering one molecule. But this case, they really deserved it. Why? Because it changed the way that people thought about carbon. And you could do all sorts of experiments with carbon dissolved in solution, which nobody had ever been able to do before. Uh, well, these are particles of ordinary carbon. They're just um, at the bottom of the beaker, so they're, they're not uh, floating, they're, they're sinking. Um, and uh, fullerene carbon, it does pretty much the same thing, so you can see particles there as well. So what we need to do, we just need to give a bit of energy to these particles. Well, I can, I can try just a simple thing to start with. I can just gently swirl the 
beaker. Just for the sake of time, uh, just you know, to save time, I'm going to use ultrasonic bath. So this um, rather simple device, it's actually very often used for cleaning jewelry, rings and e earrings and so on. So, so what it does, uh, it's just a bath essentially filled with water. Uh, and it, uh, when I turn it on, it makes this rather... When I'm going to turn it on, uh, the ultrasonic waves will be moving around these particles. They will be shaking them from uh, back and forth. And that will help the uh, molecules, in the case of the fullerene sample, to mix with solvent. Well, it is, looks black like other carbon, coal, graphite. It is not an electrical conductor like graphite. It's not a very good conductor of heat like diamond. Um, it burns like all other carbon, but it's very expensive. So the last thing you want to do is to burn your precious sample. And it has these optical properties. It's red in solution and nobody before, before had seen red carbon. Uh, throughout the solution. So you don't see that, so you might think. It's kind of grey. I think the molecule itself is not useful, but people are finding more interesting properties in the derivatives. A derivative means you attach other atoms to C60. But the other thing that's important, that C60 isn't the only molecule of this type. It's the smallest one that you can conveniently make, but you can make bigger molecules. C70 that's shaped more like a US football, and there's even C84 and several others. And this year, C60 has been discovered spectroscopically, looking at the light coming from stars. So in outer space, there's a lot of C60. Now we're going to do the same treatment with a fullerene sample. Turn it on. Now that's very definitely a solution. You can see it's very clear, so uh, it's not cloudy at all. C60 has one unique thing. It's one of the few molecules that has given rise to a new chemical symbol and the chemical symbol is the at sign, like you use in emails. And the reason why you've got a symbol is because C60 is hollow, like you can see here. And sometimes, not always, you can get atoms to go inside. And before this, chemists had never had a way of describing an atom that was inside a cage of other molecules. So, for example, you can put helium inside C60, or neon, or even xenon. And the symbol for this is now helium at C60. So C60 has a special place in chemistry because it gave rise to this new symbol. Fullerene was discovered, uh, of course, uh, it's a round shape, so the immediate idea is to use this lubricant. So you can imagine two surfaces, and you can sprinkle some fullerenes on these two surfaces, and you can let them move around, and it's fantastic. But very soon, uh, chemists discovered that fullerene is quite reactive. So when you squash it between sur two surfaces and you apply a bit of pressure, it starts polymerizing. And when it's polymerized, it forms very long chains, so it's a useless lubricant. So, um, and that's, I think it's very, uh, illustrative of the history of the fullerenes. So, so, you know, here is a fantastic great idea, here is what could be useful. You know, when we start exploring properties of fullerene, we discover something new that actually perhaps may, uh, renders this initial idea completely useless, but it opens new avenues. Uh, fullerene polymers, for example, uh, could be used, I think, in superconductors. Uh, it can be used again in these uh, non-electronic devices. Um, so, it's, I think, history of fullerene is full of this uh, peaks and troughs uh, we, we go through. And I think what we should be grateful uh, Fullerene for is the intellectual stimulation it gives us every day in, uh, when we work in the lab.